Welcome back, everyone, to the Indie Spotlight and the Bear Taffy Live Show. My name is Bear. Today we are playing Tower of Guns. This is a game by Terrible Posture Games, uh, which is uh, mostly, if not entirely, compromised of Joe Mirabello, who is a former uh, big AAA game designer who has gone independent and actually sent one of the best press releases I've ever seen in the form of a comic strip uh, for this particular game. So I really enjoyed that, and I was like, this is, this is going to be something I'd love to cover. And I am really excited about it, because I played a little bit of it. I've played about an hour or so of it myself, and I am really enjoying this one. It's a fast-paced, in the words of uh, Joe himself, it's a fast-paced, randomized FPS for the Twitch gamer. This is for me. <laughs> this is specifically directed at my kind of folk. It's a short burst lunch break FPS, not unlike Binding of Isaac mixed with Doom 2. And uh, it is tons of fun. It's got those randomized elements, like he said, of the Binding of Isaac with a very fast ga game uh, gun gameplay. I was going to say fast paced gunplay. Yes, that's the word I, phrase I was looking for. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and dive into the options field real quick here. These, uh, this right here that you see there's like text bleed onto the uh, other options in the menu, which is kind of a little issue that I have with the game that I should bring to your attention probably immediately, because while it is a little minor graphic error, uh, just it, by way of looking at this down here as well, you can see that the blue on the background of everything, that kind of happens infrequently throughout the game, which is just kind of annoying, especially if you just put a white border around all the text that would solve the problem immediately, but you know, just little gripes. And, uh, I feel like they have to put this seizure warning on everything because this isn't particularly epileptic. I don't, I don't know if that's an adjective proper to describe the source, but anyway. Uh, these are all the options to get you basically uh, visual enhancements for uh, things built in UDK, so everything is good with that. And I uh, would go ahead and get out of there. Uh, the collection, you can collect a whole bunch of stuff. You can see that I have not had that much success as far as getting through this game, but I get to get 11% completion rate, so that's decent enough, right? Uh, you can collect a whole bunch of things by doing random tasks throughout the game. I've unlocked for myself a St. Attila's Fire, Pyroclastic Jelly, and Charged Aramid Injection. Aramid? Aramid? Whatever. So let's go ahead and start off a new game. You can, of course, unlock a few different guns as you go through. Uh, they require specific tasks to actually unlock. For example, you can get this gun by getting to Stage 7. Uh, you can find six secrets in one level. Actually, it's five secrets in one level to unlock this particular gun. I've managed to unlock the Consolation Charger, which rewards all styles of play. I've also got the Portable Pizza Thrower, which is fantastic. I also love the fact that there's this one gun here called the Peas and Carrots Pistol that actually the description of the gun is choose a better gun, which is hilarious to me. I've also unlocked a few perks. You can choose one perk to begin the game with right off the start. I'm going to go ahead and uh, do triple jump again because I actually like that movement addition. And uh, let's go ahead and get started! So we're now entering the foyer, stage one of our trip through Tower of Guns. And, uh, oh, I don't know why we're... Oh, sorry, I think my controller is kind of causing some weirdness here. There we go. Simona, a genetic specialist. I'm a lab-grown jelly monster. Whoa! Let's try to synthesize a puppy, but still, this is incredible. It's about the same thing. But for certain, you are lifeless, organic material like the other attempts, but you are alive. Something I really like about this is uh, this, what's happening in the text on screen right now, is completely different than the other uh, five or six times that I've played the game up to this point. You get a different, like, storyline start, I suppose. Each time you boot up the game and each time you uh, start up, at least as far as I've seen, it may, uh, you know, run out of free scripted dialogue at some point. These are Hugbots, by the way. I learned uh, through the in-game dialogue that they were an enemy that Joe initially did not want to keep in, but apparently his wife forced them to because they were so adorable. So, naturally, he allowed you the opportunity to destroy them. Which is fantastic. Uh, let's see. Oh, God. Smoke screen cleared up, but yes. So... Much like a uh, Paranautical Activity, or a uh, Fancy Skulls, or a Binding of Isaac, you have random room generation, and uh, you open up the doors to the next room by shooting them. Which I believe you can do if you have not killed all the enemies. I may be mistaken in saying that. Let's go ahead and actually put that theory to practice right here and now. So, I get into this room, and I see that the door is likely on top. I am getting a lot of damage as a result of just kind of, kind of trying to scurry my way about, and that was not the proper way to try to handle this jump here, so let's try this one more time. There we go. We can get up here. Nice. Oh my god, this is a massive room. Holy cow, <laughs> there are a lot of threats. There's a good variety of enemies, and I, I really do like that. 
Death to hubs, yes. Exactly. Oh, man, he's uh, he's shooting even bigger piece of launchers at me. I should, uh, I should concern myself with finding some health at some point here soon. But the, yeah, as I was saying, the variety of enemies is very good. Uh, the variety of rooms themselves as well, which is something you wouldn't actually, you know, consider that much if you were thinking about, like, a Binding of Isaac-style game. And yes, as I suspected, we can't actually go through the doors without having killed all the enemies, but of course, you want to kill the enemies because they grant you certain power-ups. For example, I just missed out on picking up that little blue orb that you saw on the floor there that would have allowed me to upgrade my gun to the next level. You want to, as, uh, as often as you possibly can, kill the enemies nearby their actual location in order to provide yourself enough time to get down to that level of the floor and pick up the upgrades that they drop. So they'll mostly drop uh, health orbs and coin orbs and that kind of thing, but uh, infrequently they'll also drop those little blue orbs that allow you to upgrade your weapon, and doing so is incredibly important because the enemies will scale as you progress further into the game, and if you don't have an upgraded weapon, you are basically boned. I'm also going to try to get up here. This might be a little secret area if I can manage to do it. Very nice. All right, got a little bit of extra out of that. Yeah, I, fe I found out the hard way multiple times that if you don't upgrade your weapon as much as humanly possible, then you are likely to uh, likely to fail. Are those hug bots drunken? Of course. We've reached our first boss room, which is actually pretty damn quick. We got the big old spike room, which is a hilarious boss room simply due to the fact that there's no actual boss, it's just a matter of creating more and more obstacles that you have to deal with. So sadly, I have not uh, acquired too many upgrades, and it's looking like I'm really going to have to focus entirely on uh, destroying the main enemy before we get completely crushed and obliterated inside of here, which may end up happening before I can do anything about it. Oh, good god. Might be okay if I just stand here for a moment. There we go. Okay, so it wasn't too bad. I think we have cleared it out, we just got to get rid of the remaining little gizmos. Nice. Alright. Extra goodies. Pick up a specific boss upgrade. We got ourselves the Heindenberg Pulse. Let's see what that does. Destroy bomb bots. Okay, I'm not 100% sure what just happened there. <laughs> the uh, the use items are uh, pretty fantastic usually. Uh, a lot of them don't actually tell you what's going on much like a Binding of Isaac or uh, even a Paranormal Activity to some degree. In fact, uh, to the exact degree that I'm describing here. So yeah, that's, that's an apt analysis, is it not? They're entirely automated and won't rest. Uh, you can't let them do that. You're living proof of my progress to get up to the top floor. Now, uh, another little little grab I have, a little minor concern, is the fact that the uh, text has no little uh, sound effect. So it's very easy to completely lose that, as I mentioned, just due to the fact that the text kind of blends into the background really easily. So... It is pretty simple to miss out on the uh, text itself on the, I guess, it's not, it's not really much of a story because as I said, it kind of changes every time you go through, uh, but you know, it's giving you a bit of a background of what, what's actually going on in the Tower of Guns. I'm sure one attempt led to a mixture of puppy ears and jelly body, another, oh my good lord, okay, so this is uh, no longer, no longer narrative time, it is now time to uh, survive the the Deathblade Onslaught. Holy cow. Yes, uh, I, I want to reinforce the idea that this game will get difficult. Uh, it may not have seemed like too much that we were dealing with in the, uh, in the short time that we played in the foyer, but now that, that we're here in the... What is this called? Level 2. I've completely forgotten what this was called. There are names for every level, of course. Uh, but yeah, the game does get staggeringly difficult pretty quickly, and it's it's pretty intimidating, to be honest. Like, you uh, you find yourself ill-prepared to deal with the situation the majority of the time. Alright, I want to try to hop up there. I don't think I grabbed that upgrade, sadly. Let's see if I can maybe jump down here and see if I can find some extra stuff. Indeed, we did. Nice. This was, should be enough to get us to level 3. Very good. Eat that damage like a real live bear. Exactly. Dodging is for wusses. Um, but the... Uh, the other thing about upgrading your weapon is the fact that you actually lose weapon level upgrade points by taking damage to the enemies. So you really are inclined to uh, play as safely as you possibly can in order to give yourself the uh, best possible chance of survival. And oh my god, this is likely to kill me here. This is insanity. These wheels disc spinning at an insane rate is not helping at all. So I think my highest priority might want to be uh, 
jumping down here, in fact. This looks like it might be a touch safer, and there's a little bit of extra health. There we go. And so sometimes you just gotta avoid everything and try to regroup and rethink your strategy to what you could possibly do to get out of this position. Oh, I'm jumping right into explosions of fire death. That is not a good plan. I think I picked up just about anything I could get out of here. Oh, man. But it is crazy, it is hectic, it is fast-paced, it is a hell of a lot of fun. Tower of Guns, again, if you want to type the spotlight command over there in the chat, you can find out more about it over on the website, which I believe is simply towerofguns.com if you wanted to go ahead and get to your URL address bar all on your lonesome. I would not blame you for doing that. I'm going to get a couple more health orbs out of here. I don't think I can actually get up there. Damn it. Ugh. So i got to find a way back up. All right. Sorry for the uh, small break in the action there, guys. Twitch just completely kicked me offline. But anyway, we're back into it. Right back into the Tower of Guns. And I completely lost my train of thought. But <laughs> I think I was uh, kind of giving the uh, general pitch. So I will tell you guys again, this is Tower of Guns available at the moment for uh, $9.99 if you're buying this uh, live as you're watching on twitch.tv slash BearTaffy. This sale should be going on for a little while longer, though. Normal price of $14.99. You can get it over on TowerOfGuns.com or, of course, on Steam. It is available on Steam at the moment right here and now if you want to get it for yourself. And I believe we are still going live. So, yes, there we go. Very good. Oh, my God. I think I've, uh, I've really pushed my luck as far as I've been taking too much time on the initial levels here. So I, I got to get moving. I've got to get my upgrades as quick as I possibly can. Not get hit for fear of losing it all. Good lord, this is getting ridiculous. Holy cow. Okay, I haven't lost too much of my upgrade points, so that's good. Let's see if I can get out of here without dying. That's going to be my first priority, I suppose. I don't know what the hell just happened. There I go. <laughs> Holy crap. Oh, man. Yeah. I mean, they, that might be my, uh, my message of, hey, you know, let's try it one more time. Let's replay with the same loadout here. I think we'll be okay. Yes, Twitch needs to fix the... Yeah, Twitch needs to fix a lot of stuff, but anyway. Uh, we'll go ahead and jump in one more time. And as you can see, you, Douglas, an inebriated scholar. You were supposed to be here an hour ago. So we have, like, a brand new story here. Exactly what I was saying. So random elements not only include the enemies and the rooms and the bosses, but also the storyline, which is just hilarious. Dude, I'm totally here. I'm like right inside the front door. Douglas, the inebriated scholar. You gotta love it. We also start off with quite a few uh, items in the first room more more often than not. You gotta kill the hug bots, man, because they give you some goodies. If the game didn't want you to kill them, it wouldn't have minute weapon upgrades inside of their bodies, would it? Exactly. Bear don't die, yes. It's all blame Twitch Plays Pokemon. We can always use them as a scapegoat. Oh god, I uh, I highly, highly recommend this one. If you enjoy The Binding of Isaac, if you enjoy, even like to a degree, Risk of Rain, I was actually about to get into that little tangent of the fact that it reminds me of Risk of Rain simply due to the fact that the, uh, the time limit is of very critical importance. If you want to uh, survive for as long as you possibly can, you gotta make sure you're always moving, you're always trying to get further on, and of course, killing everything you can just simply to get upgrades to improve your chances of making it through the later stages. Yeah, like, a lot of the games that we, uh, just even, like, the, uh, the crew that, the YouTubers that you may know and love have enjoyed, have played for quite a long time, this fits right in there with them, and it is, uh, it is really, really, really good, so, again, I'll say TowerOfGuns.com, go pick it up for yourself, enjoy this one, we've just got a ton of weapon upgrades, which is amazing, holy cow, that was a really good room. I don't know what it was that just gave us all that amazing stuff, but I'm happy with it. it might have been all those bomb things. It's freaking sweet, man. I dig it. The gameplay is quite different. Yeah, I will say that. I mean, like, we know for sure that uh, there are a lot of elements similar that we've already gone over, but the fact that it plays a lot like a Doom game, you know, is obviously quite the change of pace. But, again, I'll, I'll relate it to something like Paranautical Activity or Fancy Schools, again, where you've got that, those randomized room elements. There's a lot of, it's kind of sharing elements with a lot of games. This is kind of the flavor of the, I wasn't going to say flavor of the month, but flavor of the year or two more like, of uh, just these roguelike likes that try to incorporate a lot of elements of games that you uh, maybe wouldn't normally expect to have those uh, facets of their gameplay 
And they integrate exceptionally well, and I'm really glad that it works out for more of them than it fails for. In fact, I haven't really played a game of this style that I haven't really enjoyed in, in quite a long time. But let's go see what's down this endless abyss. Luckily, I have an extra jump to prevent me from being killed here. All right, there we go. Oh my god, this is a secret. And there are a lot of exploding dudes. Nice. Finding uh, quite a few little interesting tidbits in this particular playthrough here. Fortunately, these guys may be never ending, so I might have to uh, consider escaping at some point. Oh, lordy. That teleporter looks like the only way out. See, the soundtrack sounds like the risk of rain. Yeah, I wouldn't be, uh, I wouldn't argue with you there, actually. When you start listening to it. I would have to uh, check to see. I am going to go ahead and unlock this for my price of nearly all of my coins. Got the Jump Height Plus Plus badge. That is actually totally worth the cost. That makes me very happy to see. Let's go ahead and destroy the remaining little obstacles here. I think we actually regenerated a couple of the enemies inside of this particular room. Play with the weakest weapon. Yeah, <laughs> we'll have to try that out, right? Okay, a couple more weapon upgrades. We're going to get to level 4 before we even get to the first boss. That is... Probably the best I've had in quite some time. I wonder if I can just jump straight up to the boss from here. Might be an option. Oh, it's close. Very close. We have to find a way all the way around these platforms. Here we go. Hello, Corby. We're playing some Tower of Guns. Check the uh, exclamation spotlight. There you go. Tower of Guns by Terrible Posture Games, a.k.a. Joe Mirabello. Sex tuple jump. Yes, we've... Significantly improved our jump height here. Mama Spinbot! Ah, oh, that's one of my faves. One of my faves of the early bosses. We're actually pretty freaking OP right now, so this isn't even going to be an issue. Oh, just kidding. We went down to level 3. Okay, so we might hurt! Oh, good lord! Oh, god, I may have just totally jinxed myself because I am very low on health. <laughs> I just got owned! Wow! Suck it, bear! All right, let's try that. Uh, let's try that weakest. Oh, shoot! Sorry, I just replayed with the same loadout. Hold on. Art style reminds me of Borderlands One. Well, that is a good point, Briggles. You have the cell shading, uh, cell shading art style. Very, very similar. I'm gonna go ahead and quit here, and we're gonna start off with the peas and carrots gun just for funsies. And we'll go to immune to fall damage because why not as well? Never actually played with the peas and carrots gun, so this will be a fun little interaction. <laughs> it's okay. I was OP. I was OP, man. I was just playing stupid. Somewhere in this rust bucket is 14 gazillion dollars! Heiress to the bacon feller fortune. And Simon, my assistant, is with me. Got a little peas and carrots gun. This thing actually isn't that terrible. It's just got an extremely small hitbox. Which is hilarious. Knowing your father, I, I guess I'm going up then. I hope this doesn't make me late for my hair appointment. Ha ha! <laughs> Okay, let's keep going. This thing is not going to do well. What would be hilarious if is, is if you uh, upgraded this gun like three or four times and it ended up being like the strongest gun in the game. That would make me so happy. I really don't think it's going to be the case, but that would just be really funny. We need to get a bunch of upgrades though, and hopefully something good can come out of it. Oh, they're smashing me in the face. Stop it, stop it. Oh, Lord, what the hell was that? I gotta destroy these spawners, man. This is killing me over here. The immunity to fall damage was probably the least efficient perk I possibly could have chosen. Holy cow, look how long it takes to destroy these spawn launchers. Okay, I think that was the last of it. I think that was the last of us. I gotta run over here and try to get these upgrades before they disappear. Oh, they're gonna be gone, they're gonna be gone! I get a little bit of health out of that. Oh, man. Oh, hey, they spawn more uh, enemies. Perfect. There's Glenda. Yes, indeed. All right, get down here. Take a chance on losing a bit of health in order to hopefully pick up some upgrades. If I can get to weapon level two, I'll be satisfied with this. I'll be more than satisfied with this entire playthrough. All right. Away we go. Take the long route out the door. Nice shot. Snipe the door open. Add cheese to the gun there. Sometimes you think about cheese. Indeed you do, buddy. Oh, good lord. 
This is not a good weapon. Surprisingly enough, the game was telling the truth. Oh, there I go. <laughs> okay. Well, this is it, guys. This is Tower of Guns. Highly recommend it again. It is $10 on Steam right now. Sales going on. Normally 15 bucks. Made by uh, primarily Joe Mirabello, Terrible Posture Games. Have a look at it. Go have some fun. I dig it. I think you will, too. Thanks for watching the Indie Spotlight. Thanks for watching the Bear Taffy Live Show. See you next time.